Coming up on this episode of Welcome to Taiwan. After escaping an impending typhoon in Taipei, we head south in search of bluer skies and golden beaches. And as we explore this stunning region of the island, we discover that the people here are just as happy as they are crazy. <laughs> happy, happy! <laughs> This one is going to be a real adventure, so buckle in as we head deep into the wilder side of Taiwan. This episode is brought to you by Skillshare. To find out how to get two months free access to their wealth of online classes, make sure to stay tuned to the end of this video. Welcome back to the next episode of our Taiwan series and we're here in the very south of the island. Hopefully the weather's going to be nicer, that's the reason we got away from the crazy storm. Um, but first thing we're going to do is get some food here in the station and try and get a ticket and immediately in about an hour get on another train and yeah just explore the south of Taiwan. I'm excited dude. I can't believe how efficient the train was. So in the last series when we were in Sri Lanka, it's the equivalent of going from the north of Sri Lanka to the south, which in our tuk-tuk took three days. And in Taiwan, it took us one, one and a half hours. <laughs> yeah, even though we had just gotten off one train, we still wanted to go even further up the east coast. We wanted to be as far away as possible from the typhoon. And luckily, another train was leaving in a matter of minutes. But we just needed to grab some lunch first. Yes. What kind is this? I don't know. <laughs> is that kimchi? I don't know. Kimchi? No. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, 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 this kimchi. Oh, oh I also right. like kimchi. Yeah, I I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> but it all looks so good. Fancy. Right. This train was two hundred dollars each, so. Taiwanese dollars. Taiwanese dollars, so about eight dollars. Yes, sir. Quite cheap, anyway. Look how much leg room we have. Tires would approve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's chicken. Okay. Mm. Yeah, as you can see, the public transport really is this easy. Less than two hours ago, we were 350 kilometers north, and now we were sitting comfortably eating lunch on our second train of the day across the southern mountain ranges to our final destination of Taitung. The views were stunning and we could see the huge gorges and valleys that this region is particularly famous for and so we just pressed the snooze button, relaxed and took it all in. Okay, here we are, Tai Tung. Tai Tung, Tai Tung or Tai Dong? I have no idea. And we've seen that there's a a hostel, well there's a bunch of hostels in this town. It was like come out the train station turn left wasn't it? I think so yeah. Uh, so we're gonna try and find a hostel and just go for a wander and uh, check out this town because we have no idea what's here. It's much greener, quiet, palm trees, palm trees, sea breeze. Yeah. <gasps> you can smell the salt. And there's no humidity here. Yeah less. Uh -huh. Welcome to On The Way, way Hostel. Yeah. Let's hope they have some rooms, huh? Yeah, luckily they had a few bunk beds for us. So we just dumped our stuff before taking out some of the free bags the hostel offered. We went on a hunt for some dinner with another girl yeah. from the hostel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, coming in, yeah. 
And it turns out we needed these rusty little bangers as the town was about a 20 minute ride away and it took us some exploring to find something to eat. With all of the neon lights and Chinese writing, we just had to follow our nose and hope something appealing would present itself. And one dark alley after another finally led us to some steamy pots that we knew were most likely filled with something delicious. The next day we had a slow and lazy morning and enjoyed the free hustle breakfast and coffee. The only way to get around Taitung seemed by bicycle, but the bicycles from the hostel were no good, so we chose to rent better ones from the train station. Our plan was pretty straightforward, pack some supplies from the store and cycle up the coast with no other aim than to just explore this region and search for some cool sights with a high risk to get completely lost. A wee bit hot. Very hot. <laughs> it's just so quaint is the word I want to use. The, the the road, the cycling here. There's not a lot of cars. <sighs> it's not polluted. This is fun. This is fun. And we're losing some weight. And can you hear that? That's a fighter jet. Oh, there he is. Wow. There's a big military base right here. So that's really cool. The Taiwanese military. We did a good thing. This is a good recommendation of coming south to get away from that typhoon. Yeah. Maybe you find a place to swim. Yeah. Jumping in like this. Jumping like this. Yeah. You know, he'll dry up in like five minutes. Yeah. So now we had a plan to find a place to swim and with some tunes playing on our speakers, we just enjoyed the ride along up the coast and kept an eye out for a place to cool off. We saw some rocky areas down by a coastal path and we took a look to see what we could find. Luckily there were loads of little rock pools that were perfectly safe to hang out at as the tide was just right. There's like a natural staircase here, look. So we stripped down to our boxes and we just soaked up some sun in these Pacific filled rock pools. That's better. Oh, this is lovely. Our own little rock pool. Oh, this is just what you need on a hot, sweaty afternoon on a bicycle. Your own private, natural rock pool. And the water is just right. It's not too cold, it's not too hot. After spending a good hour here, it was time to get back on the bikes and continue our ride into the unknown. Even though we didn't have a destination, we couldn't help but smile the whole way as Taiwan's eastern coast was proving to be something truly magical. Eventually, we found a sign for a place mysteriously named Water Running Upward. So of course that impossible physical miracle tricked us into checking it out. Luckily it was free because, well yeah, it wasn't exactly as epic as we thought it would be. The water itself is not that spectacular. Mm. It's just like a little river. It's an optical illusion, as you can see. Yeah, it kind of looks like it's flowing upwards slightly. 
<laughs> Slightly. But if you're in the area and you've got a motorbike, I would come down here. Yeah, <laughs> we'd recommend it. It's cute. Like you. Place. It's cute like you. Should we have our cute little picnic? Oh my oh, gosh. Yeah. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> brought some bananas. <gasps> oh my god, I love bananas. <laughs> And so after an entire day of riding and exploring, it was time for the 30 kilometer or so ride back to Tai Tung. The ride back was just as, if not even more stunning as the first time as the heat had subsided and the sun was putting on a show for us as we made our way back to the hostel. The next morning it was time to leave Taitung. This place is super beautiful but there was not a whole lot going on. So we thought what better way to find an exciting adventure than to start hitchhiking up north. To see if we could reach a city called Walien around 200 kilometers up the coast. We chose a good spot and put our thumbs out. And yeah, we weren't really sure if hitchhiking would be a thing here in Taiwan. But within 10 minutes someone pulled over and offered us a ride. Mind your head. <laughs> What is your name? D. D. Nice to meet you, D. D. Thank you. I am from Belgium. My name Belgium. is yeah, My name is Damien. Belgium. Belgium. Brussels, Antwerp. Oh, oh, small, small country. country. Small. And I come from England. England. Yeah. This lady was a total sweetheart, and we enjoyed the views whilst we had some really nice chats about all of her adventures around the world and her life here in Taiwan. Thank you! Bye bye! Safe travels! Uh, that lady was really nice, bless her. She was indigenous and uh, she would got fired from her job, bless her, because she's been taking care of her mother who's gotten sick. So she's obviously, and she was a social worker, mm -hmm. so she's obviously got like that kind streak in her DNA, so she kindly picked us up. And uh, we're about 20 k's north now, aren't we? Beautiful country to be doing this in. Good company, <laughs> and uh, we've got some 7-Eleven snacks in the in the bag. So yeah. life is good. Life is freaking good. Walian, Walian, If I don't look at you, you don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you. Malts. Is this beer? I know. It says malts made in Germany. I think this is beer. And some Germany, so it's probably malts. And some potato snacks. Potato? Something like that feels like. What's that? Apple. Apple. Oh, okay, apple. Shishia, shishia. 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 You're welcome. Shishia. If only we had a bottle opener. Oh, you have to try. Oh, you want to try one? America. No, no. Uh, England and Belgium. I'm from Belgium. Belgium. Europe. <laughs> I'm from, no, like, so wait, also still Filipino. He's Fili from the tribe in that mountain over there. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> What's this like then? It's pretty good. But I really can't put a name on it. Destination? Somewhere in this direction. <laughs> 
These ladies were amazing, and not only did they pick us up and give us snacks and beers, but they also cracked jokes with us in Chinese. And even though Damien and I had no idea what was going on, we just laughed and cheered at their hilarious personalities. We soon pulled over, and the ladies decided that we had to stand in front of a police station to take some selfies. And again, we had no idea why, but we just went with it. Very good. Very, Very good. good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Chen Chen. Do the Korean thing. Ah. Ah, Very good. Very good. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> happy, happy. happy, happy. <laughs> Let's eat some lunch. Lunch. Yes, yes. Yes. Oh, these are the lovely little ladies. Oh, I want to eat this. No, I really think that they think I'm indigenous. I really think that they think I'm indigenous. Yeah, these ladies were so curious to Damien's ethnic background, and they kept asking him which tribe he was from. They even ordered us some indigenous food, and a mother in the background started to get work on some kind of sign for us to use to hail more cars with. This entire ride was turning wild, and we were just taking in all of their kindness and just loving life. What does it have there, Damien? I have no clue. It's, it's, a, it's a cardboard with some Chinese on it. what it means. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hold it up. Very good idea. And it's waterproof as well. Yeah. I want to hitchhike. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Mama. <laughs> These lo lovely ladies, they bought us lunch as well. We tried to pay, but they wouldn't let us. Um, this is hitchhiking gold right here. Bye bye. Bye, bye. We've still got about 60 kilometers left to go to Walian. This is actually Walian State, so they were a little bit confused. Yeah, I think that's what it was. District State, whatever. But we're going to the city, which is still, yeah, 60k up north. But there's a 7 Eleven, a gas station here, and we've got a gorgeous little sign now. What more do you want? And uh, luckily, some clouds, hopefully, in a second as well, so that we're not burning out here. We're very cultured, sometimes beer, sometimes beer, sometimes cider, so it's not the busiest road in the world, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> what do you say? Yeah, we can, uh, instead of going to Hualien, but he's going to Fengning. It's on the way. Okay. Feels good to get picked up, but I kind of wanted to finish oh, yeah. my beer. Yeah. Oh, well. Excited for the road. Shit, shit, buddy, shit, shit. Awesome. Awesome. All right, well. <sighs> that was too easy. That was too easy. That was too easy. Cheers, Taiwan. So yeah, as you can see, hitchhiking in Taiwan was proving to be not just incredibly beautiful, but also extremely easy to get a ride. And as we reached 30 kilometers further north, we just took in more of the stunning scenery. Thank you very much, kind sir. Xie xie. Thank you very much again. This guy knows us very well. He dropped us at the 7 Eleven, which means let's get another cider. It's cider o'clock. Cider o'clock, bro. Good luck. What did he say? Well, <laughs> Cool. Just like that, Damien. 
Magic this is actually a joke. This is easier to hitchhike than Thailand. Oh, hello doggy. Hello doggy. Oh. 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 Hello. How are you? Either he's cold or he's afraid of me. Put your hand out for him. He's like, he's like, you've taken my seat. Yeah, probably. <laughs> this ride was pretty cramped thanks to these two scruffy hounds, but at least one of these dogs seemed happy to see us. And soon we were dropped off just a short five kilometers from downtown Walien. And so with one last ride, we would be in the heart of town. And this is somewhere that we were really excited to visit and spend a good five days exploring. Oh, no. <sighs> and we're here, high five. We made it, five rides, and uh, fun day, right? Such a fun day. I miss hitchhiking. You know, you just get on the road and you, you have local experiences. You get local food and you meet local people and you see local oh things. And I met amazing people, but I don't even remember their names. I know, that's the one thing about hitchhiking is yeah. you're like, hey, what's your name? And they're like, Bushua. And you're like, okay, probably going to forget that. But <laughs> Like most of them didn't speak English. Or, or like None of them, except for that last guy. The last guy spoke a bit of English, like a bit. We'll make our way to the hostel and we'll see you guys in the next episode when we have loads of awesome plans. Uh, trekking, trails, kayaking in the ocean, meeting local people, trying loads of food, um, and just having a great time. So thanks for watching this episode. Uh, Damien, thanks for uh, being a legend and traveling with me around this area of the world and bringing me to Taipei and Taiwan. It's been great so far. And uh, yeah, the. the the trip is halfway, not even halfway through. Yeah. We've only it's been only here for day. five days. Yeah, only five days. Yeah, amazing. All right, see you in the next one, guys. Peace. Booyah. We would also like to take this opportunity to thank our amazing long-term sponsor on this channel in Skillshare. Skillshare is an amazing online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and much more. And if you use our link in the description below, you can get yourself a free trial for two months. So you can get access to all of their amazing courses and start leveling up your abilities in pretty much anything that you want to for free for two whole months. And if you'd like to continue, Skillshare is also super affordable as an annual subscription is less than $10 a month. So join more than 7 million other creators learning with Skillshare. We especially like Matty Brown's course on low budget filmmaking. And we took lots of cool tips about in-camera effects and simple tricks you can do in the editing process that can help make cheap camera gear appear high level and professional. So thank you so much to Skillshare and we will see you very soon. Thank you.